Today we are going to present a case study on Domino's Pizza Group. I would like to introduce my group members. First of all, Chia Hui Zi, uh, Tineshwari, Sashi Kumar, and Zishan Ahmad. And myself, my name is Jeremiah. Um, next, we are going to show you a video presentation on Domino's Pizza. Go. Present question one. What are the advantages and disadvantages of being an employee and self-employed? Employee is who working under a company, and a self-employed is who own a business. First, I'm going to start with this advantage of being an employee. Uh, being an employee, we have less worry about money because we get a set payment or fixed payment end of each month. Next, paid holiday and sick leave. If employee take a medical leave, the company are willing to pay the medical expenses when the employee go. And then, when the employee go for the holiday, they can claim from their annual leave. And next, they, they are for auto enrollment into a pension scheme. Employee have less worry about their retirement because they have an auto enrollment into a pension scheme. And next, opportunity for further trainings. Usually, the companies are willing to pay and send their employees to the further trainings to the employee gain the knowledge about the product and the services. And the last advantage of being an employee is possible access to benefits such as gym membership and health insurance. But however, they also have a disadvantage of being employed. Okay, the first disadvantage is employee have a daily commitment. Like they have to work like office hours 9 to 5 every day. And by that, they have a lack of flexibility because they have no time to do their personal things. Next. Regarding the holiday dates and length, employee have a limited period time of uh, holiday because they cannot enjoy the holiday the, the time they want. And then, uh, childcare issues. Usually, married employee cannot take care of their child by their own and they have to find a baby sister to take care of their child. And begin an employee, we also always have a job pressure because we always have a deadline to finish a project and we have to rush it all the time. Advantage and disadvantage of being self-employed. The advantage of disadvantage of being self-employed is the freedom to fit work around the family members. They always have time for their family members because they have a flexible time to arrange their work, and then they can just uh, be there with their family members. And the second, get work to uh, on the multitude of different projects and work with the different companies. They have a lot of chances to them when they work with the different companies because they gain a knowledge, lot of knowledge by working the with the companies, different companies. And next, uh, the assignment of taking responsibility for company success. As we, we always excited to take a responsibility on our own company success and enjoy the profit as well. However, they also have a disadvantage for being employed. The first disadvantage is lack of employment security. Like, they have a less employment security and have a risk on it. Next, loss of earning if they take a, any leave or holidays. Because we will lose earning if we take a long holiday because we are not earning on the particular days. And next, losing the division between work and the home time. Because when we are working at the home, it means home become our office too. So it means we are losing the division between home and the office. And the last point is economic crisis. Really, economic crisis can affect our own company's success. Because it's whether good or bad, it really will affect our own company. This is a maintenance and career needs theory. Okay, I can relate this theory with our questions because the material accurate needs theory has three needs. First, need for the achievement, need for power, and need for affiliations. Okay, for the need for the achievements, usually self-employed uh, need have the desire to need for the achievements because they always have a strong need to set and achieve the challenging goals, and they also likes to receive regular feedback 
on their progress and achievements. And self-employed also desire to need the power because they always want to control people and influence people. They also enjoy competition and love to winning the competition and they really love the status and recognition. And lastly, need for affiliation. Usually, employee wants uh, to need for the affiliations because they always want to belong to a group and they always want to be liked and will often go along whatever the rest of the groups want to do. So, that's it from my part. Thank you. Today I'm going to present about advantages and disadvantages of small sole trader within the restaurant sector. So what is small sole trader actually? A sole trader business structure is a person trading as an individual legally responsible for all aspects of the business. This also includes any debts and losses which can be shared with others. The first advantage is quick to change. As the owner of small business, you have the distinct advantage of changing your plan or tactics much faster than your larger competitors. Okay, for the second, family bonding. The feeling of a being part of a family is also an advantage of that small business can have over larger ones. Okay, for the second one, second advantage will be family bonding. The feeling of being a part of a family is also an advantage that small business have over large business. And okay, for the third, close to customer. Being close to the customer is important for success in business and a small business is frequently much closer to the customer than the larger one. A small business can meet with their customer more frequently and develop their relationship much more better. Okay. For this structure, it's a small business is by nature very lean. There are very few employees than the larger organization and also have a few layers of department and organization. However, they also have a disadvantage which will be the first point will be less recognition. Small companies don't typically have the name like recognition of larger business that gain exposure through more location and promotional efforts. Second one, small capital. Budget constraints are significant small business hurdle. Small business don't have the funds to put in research and development or technology, marketing and promotion and high high end inventory. All of these elements impact a company's ability to develop. And for the last one, bargaining power. Usually for this, the small solo trader usually have less bargaining power in each coin compared to the larger ones. Bargaining power impedes a small company ability to get a low cost base, basis of real resale products. Typically, large companies can negotiate volume discounts and bulk pricing that reduce their cost per unit. This is the theory, shareholder and stakeholder, which I can relate to my questions, it means First, I'm going to introduce about stakeholders. Stakeholders means it means responsibility to a wider group which includes the employee, manager, and customer. Domino Pizza is done in the CSR program, which includes national pro school tour program, which led the students to learn to how to make the pizza. And for the shareholders, it means to be responsible to the business, which ensure the companies make profit for shareholders. As for Domino's. They make 18% increase from 2015 by developing greater attractive promotion. Xiao Yizi here. I'm going to talk about the advantage and also the advantage of the limited company in the restaurant sector. So about the limited liability, which is one of the advantage of the company. So company shareholder will only be liability for the debt the company accrues according to the level of their own investment. Another next for the tax benefits. That is because limited companies are only taxed on the profit, which usually just only 21%, and which is lower than the sole proprietor or partnership, which will be rich for 40%. So next for the potential credibility and prejudice. This is because the professional and corporate image provided by the limited company structures will add up value prejudice and also credibility in a business. And the last one, uh, which is the first one, is the quick and easy to get us started. In now say, internet is everywhere. So that is very easy to set up a limited company. Even you could just apply in a few minutes by using the internet online. And the last and not least, separate legal identity. 
Limited company is a deemed to be separate legal identity from its owner. That's because so that the company will be exist beyond the owner life. Thank you. I'm going to talk about the disadvantage. First of all, will be the high setup cost. Due to the level of reporting requirements, the accountant's fees for companies will be increased if you compare with the unincorporated entity. So for the next one, it is the difficult to withdraw money. This is because there is you even you are the CEO or the director from the company, you only can withdraw the money as a form of salaries, payments, payrolls, or even the loan or dividends. And the third one will be must incorporate companies with a Company House Act 1985. You as a registered limited company, you need to inform every single details or significant change, such as the register office, service address, company names, member details, appointment or even the remove of a director, and also the share capitals. And the fourth will be more complexity. More complexity is true because they are more complex and restrict rules and governing because uh, there is a account and bookkeeping which is expected to produce in years account in double entry format and also balance sheet and others note also. Last and not least, there is more restriction in the company names. There is certain rules and regulations to be aware when you need a supporting documents for a sensitive words or the name which is similar with the existing company. That's all on my part. Thank you. Well, this is Ishan. Today I'm going to talk about question number three, what might motivate entrepreneurs to join a franchise. Basically, as you know, in a franchise business, the franchiser provides a developed way of doing business, ongoing support, guidance, and system assistance. Buying a franchise can be a viable alternative to start, starting your own business. Basically, franchisers, franchises offers the independence of small business ownership supported by the benefits of a big business network. You don't necessarily need business assistance, business experience to run a franchise. Franchises usually provide the training you need to operate the business model. As you know, franchises have a higher rate of success as comparing to the as comparing to the startup business. You may find it easier to secure finance for a franchise. It may cost less to buy a franchise than start your own business. At the same time, franchises often have an established reputation. And I mean, franchises often have an established reputation and image, proven management and work practices, access to national advertising, and ongoing support. As you know, there are a lot of benefits and advantages to join a franchise. There are three points strong corporate image training and development programs from the franchisor, strong marketing, good track record, and risk avoidance. First of all, any good franchise company has developed a method of doing business that produces successful results. Even though they are required to provide you with a great deal of information. As you know, in branding, you already know the company, the company has built a brand on a regional or national basis that has value in the eyes of customers that you are, required, that you are trying to attract. You know, friends, in a franchise business, they provide you training and development programs to run your business. You have all the support from the franchisor in terms of financial, operational, and management. So there's minimum risk. So you can avoid all the risk. Ongoing support. I mean, the company, the, the, the franchisor, they provide you ongoing support. Franchise, franchise companies have stopped, dedicated staff to provide ongoing assistance to franchises. You're building and running your business. While you're running and building your business, you can always call on experienced people when you when you hit a rough spot or want to share new ideas for growing the business. So I think that would be all for my part. Constitutional theory that I can relate to my question about franchise business. My name is Jeremiah and I will uh, briefly explain about the advantages and the disadvantages of being a sole trader in general. So, firstly, um, sole traders are often small businesses, so they are able to offer a more personalized service. This means um, the owner can provide a better customer service to the customers. Next, the owner has full control over all decision making. Uh, this is pretty 
um, clear what, what it means that the owner has makes all the decisions in the company and the next is no staff to manage or pay so usually small uh, sole traders usually have uh, no staff or minimum staff so most of the profits can go to the owner itself uh, the next is no annual account to prepare because um, sole, tra sole traders are not a limited or registered company so they don't have to prepare an annual account for their business and the next is um, the owner retains all profits from the business and last but not least is all information about the company are kept private so we don't have to share any information to anyone so these are the disadvantages of being a sole trader first of all the owner is fully liable to any risk in and out of the business this is because um, being a sole trader the owner is not a separate or le a separate legal entity from the law so if the business goes bankrupt or the business goes into debt the owner is fully liable to this risk next is um, difficult to raise finances to fund the business this is because being a sole trader the company has no credibility when the company has no credibility it's uh, difficult to get resources and so therefore the company may struggle to expand in the future Next is, no staff to fall back on in case of any accidents or illnesses. In being a sole trader, you might not have any staff that has your specific skill set. So, therefore, whenever an accident or sickness, the business will not run for that period of time. Next is, uh, unable to take advantage of the economics of scale. The economics of scale here shows that um, being a sole trader is not the same as a limited company whereby the limited company purchases their materials in bulk whereas a small sole trader purchases in a small amount. Therefore, the sole, the sole trader has to charge a higher price for their products so that they can cover the cost for the materials bought. And last but not least, um, all decisions are made by one person. This is also a disadvantage because uh, the success or failure lies on one person. So if the business is a failure, it lies on one person. If it's a success, well done to the person. Thank you. Now I'm going to talk about the Porter's value chain for Domino's Pizza. First of all, um, Porter value chain. It focuses on how inputs are changed into outputs. So the first primary activity is inbound logistics. Inbound logistics here, the processes are related to receiving, storing and distributing internally. Supply, supplier relationships are a key factor in creating value here. Um, for example, purchasing raw materials. Um, Another example is also um, purchasing um, delivery vehicles for um, home, home delivery. Next is operations. Operations are activities that transfers input into output that are sold to customers. Um, examples of this are preparation of pizza bases, customization of pizzas, um, making side orders and the salads and on-time delivery. Next is outbound logistics. Outbound logistics are the activities that deliver the products to the customers. So basically this is just transporting the pizza bases and making sure the pizzas are served hot. And next is marketing and sales. Marketing and, marketing and sales are the process used to persuade clients to put to purchase from Domino's instead of other competitors. So basically, um, we have to see how the, the benefits offered and how well uh, Domino's communicates with the customers to deliver these products. So basically, the examples here are uh, market segmentation, target market, branding, redefining the menu. Uh, pricing, distribution, advertising, and promotional offers. And last but not least is service and support. Service and support here is basically the after sales. So 
you have to see um, Domino's has to take care of the customer satisfaction, uh, have to deal with the online orders well and make sure the home delivery, make sure the delivery reaches on time and if it's late, we can give maybe a free pizza to the next, for the next order. Thank you. Oh. Now I'm going to discuss about the support activities of the Porter Value Chain for Domino's Pizza. First of all is the infrastructure. Infrastructure is the company's support system and the functions that allow the company to maintain its daily operations. So these systems are basically the accounting system, the legal system, the administrative system and the general management of, the, of Domino's. Next is uh, human resource management. Human resource management is how well the company recruits hires, trains, motivates, rewards and retains its, its employees. So basically, um, reward, rewarding the employees uh, meaning, means that they would retain the employees for a longer period of time. Next is uh, procurement. Procurement is what the organization uses to get resources it needs to operate. So, uh, um, this also means uh, acquiring its resources and negotiating for the best prices. Next is uh, technology development. Technology development here are activities that relate to managing and processing information as well as protecting the company's knowledge base. I want to talk about question number five. Will franchises always act in the interest of the franchisor? How can this problem be solved? So there actually there's a possibility of yes and no. Let's say yes. The franchisee, if we say yes, we can solve the problem by following methods. The franchisee is legally bound to the franchisor. The franchisor needs franchisor to, to help compete with bigger businesses. If we say no, then our franchisee's position is weaker than the franchisor. And the franchisor is always able to lead the business you know, anytime he wants without even further notice. I'm here. So now we're going to talk about the question 6, which is what type of business would you prefer to start your own business or even a franchiser? So in our group, answer will be a franchiser, so which is in the food and beverage in fast food industry. About the franchising, what is all about the franchising? Franchising actually is a business relationship of the friends, franchiser and franchisee with the agreements on having the rights to distribute the franchise goods and also services by using the business name for certain periods. Going to implement a resource-based value, which is play an important role in example in our domino pizzas. Resources such as tangible and also the intangible. Tangible such as the machinery, equipment to make a really good pizza and for intangible will be a brand reputation and trademark which will affect the view from the public and from the customer also to, de to determine how much was the value from the company words. Of course, there will be certain of the benefits of when we get to franchiser. So the first of it will be the good management and also marketing. Franchiser will give the franchisee an avenue to the technical quality support and also the quality staff who can advise to them. Like just a domino pizza, they offer their marketeers and also assistant franchiser to choose the locations and help them to even manage the phase of promotion and also operations. A good corporate image. Brand image from the franchiser have been established. Public well know about the company and expecting to get the exactly the same product and also services from the franchisee. Just like Domino Pizza, they promise to the customer they will send their pizza within 30 minutes with the fresh great pizza. And for the next one will be training and also development provided. In most of the franchisee system, the organizations has been provide continuous training and also keep tracking about their franchising performance. Even Domino Pizza, they developed for management school and also online to keep, keep tracking their franchisee. And for the next will be personal ownerships. As a franchisor, operation is still your business and you may enjoy the incentive also profit with, uh, just like any sole proprietor do. Although there is some terms and conditions in Domino Pizza, but you, even you can steal your boss, you can sell your store anytime. Even the franchisor will help you to locate a new buyer and assist you in the terms on 
uh, arrangement. Last will be the lower fusion rate. There is a lower risk for the business owner, franchisee, because they are shouldered all the responsibility, including for the finance, operations, so that they have the minimum liability and minimum risk for it. That's all on my part. Thank you. Are there any questions? Okay, no. So, um, this is the end of our presentation. I hope you all understand the case study presented. Thank you very much.